Hello and welcome to Brief Tune. Today we bring you a cartoon series called Camp Laszlo and there is no doubt that it was one of your favorite shows. So sit back, bring some popcorn, and enjoy the video. Camp Laszlo is an animated television series of five seasons that aired on Cartoon Network from 2005 to 2008. It was created by Joe Murray. This series revolves around the adventures of Laszlo, an eccentric, optimistic Brazilian spider monkey, and his friends Raj the timid Indian elephant and Clam the quiet albino pygmy rhinoceros at Camp Kidney, which is a summer camp for scouts. The camp is located in the fictional town of Prickly Pines and is known for a low standard of quality and has been threatened with closure more than once. It's led by Scoutmaster Lumpus, with most of the administrative details assigned to his assistant, Mr. Slinkman. There is also a full staff complementing the camp, including a nurse and a chef. There's also a rival summer camp called Acorn Flats, which has higher quality facilities than Camp Kidney, a point of contention between the two respective camps, and is attended solely by girls who are called the Squirrel Scouts. Primarily focusing on Laszlo, Raj, and Clam's respective female counterparts attending that camp. The two camps are a part of a larger hierarchical organization under the direct command of Commander Hoo-Ha, with the Big Bean as the head of all scout chapters. Now, before we head to the history of the camp, let's go through some recurring characters briefly. Laszlo is a free-spirited, adventurous, kind-hearted spider monkey who strives to bring peace to Camp Kidney. He is the leader of the Jelly Bean Trio, as he often goes on adventures with his friends Raj and Clam, his bunk cabin mates. He is shown to be very naive and considers everyone his friend, even Scoutmaster Lumpus and Edward, even though the two despise him. The others can sometimes get annoyed by his free-spirited nature. He is also shown to have a friendship with Patsy Smiles, the ringleader of the Squirrel Scouts, though sometimes he is shown to be afraid of her and is usually oblivious to her crush on him. Sometimes they clash for who is better or for the same goal. Raj is an Indian elephant. He is part of the Jelly Cabin Trio and is probably the most nervous, cowardly, and cautious of the characters. He is the deuteragonist of the series, and throughout it, it is shown that he has an addiction to marshmallows. Clam is the quiet kid at Camp Kidney, rarely speaking more than a few words in each sentence, usually repeating the final words that his friends say. He has a very deep and raspy voice. He was very hostile towards Raj when they first met, however, he was very accepting of Laszlo and his quirky life. Lifestyle. He doesn't seem it, but Clam is a talented genius. Scoutmaster Lumpus is a grumpy and bossy moose with a big ego. He is always in a bad mood and enjoys ruining the fun for the other scouts. Lumpus mispronounces his last name, and his parents' lack of care may have contributed to his disposition, and we will see that shortly. He seemingly accepts Laszlo as his son without questioning it due to his oblivious nature. Slinkman is Lumpus' assistant and a loyal, kind yellow banana slug. He knows the Bean Scout handbook, but often reads it upside down. Slinkman does a lot of backbreaking work and has been at the camp for at least least five years. He has a fondness for the campers and occasionally joins in their activities, and Slinkman enjoys playing pranks on Scoutmaster Lumpus to get back at him for forgetting his birthday. Edward is a curmudgeon platypus and the antagonist who likes to laugh at others' misfortune. Edward had his personality inherited from his brothers. He hates Laszlo due to his optimistic and energetic personality, which often clashes with his grounded temperament. He's somewhat jealous of him because he knows how to have fun. He is also the only Bean Scout to have any sort of common sense and gets easily enraged by idiocy. Edward is also known to play mean pranks. Patsy is a perky and adventurous Squirrel Scout who leads her group. She's headstrong and sometimes hot-headed. However, she also has a sweet and kind-hearted side, especially when someone needs help. Patsy has conflicts with the Bean Scouts, but occasionally gets along with them. However, she may exaggerate her abilities and can act cowardly when scared. Commander Hoo-Ha is a muscular bison who leads both camps and is Patsy's father, which explains why she's so tough. Scoutmaster Lumpus fears him due to the potential punishment for his negligence. Hoo-Ha mistakenly calls Slinkman Slugman and has a similar lack of knowledge about platypuses, referring to Edward as a beaver duck. There are many other recurring characters Characters that we might come across later. For now, let's tell the whole story from the ancient times to the current ones. And square one would be the Battle of Pimpleback Mountain. When Scoutmaster 
Lumpus's great-grandfather, General Sherman Beauregard Lumpus, who fought in the Battle of Pimpleback Mountain, and his only soldier was his tent, Old Ironside. The battle itself consisted of General Lumpus being attacked by his own men because he had stolen things from them and kept everything inside Old Ironside, so they attacked him in revenge. After rolling down the side of a mountain, the general fell into a passing circus and was forced to work in the circus as a result. The last time anyone saw or heard anything about Lumpus's great-grandfather, the general was apparently cleaning up after the circus's elephants, which even Raj finds disgusting. Slinkman revealed and elaborated this whole story, which is written on a memorial plaque after Laszlo admits that they feel bad about what happened to Lumpus's great-great-grandfather's tent. Now, what happened is that the jelly beans looked inside the tent and found a lot of beautiful possessions, but they got confused when they saw metal stamps that were the property of the other soldiers. Raj destroys half of the tent after a spider accidentally lands on his trunk. Lumpus comes back, only to find the tent in ruins. The jelly beans finally admit to telling him the truth, but Lumpus believes the enemy's done it and rips off the rest of the tent. After that, Slinkman smacks him on the head with a frying pan to get him out of his crazed state. A new character is introduced later, the Big Bean who went to Camp Kidney when he was a scout, and he seems to have the personality of Scoutmaster Lumpus, but it is revealed that he isn't that bad after Laszlo gives him back the neckerchief that he previously owned. If it wasn't for this gesture, the Big Bean could have let Camp Kidney be demolished. But how exactly did he save it? So, the Bane Scouts return to Camp Kidney only to discover that it no longer exists and is going to be replaced by a parking lot. They are taken to Acorn Flats by Jane Doe, who explains that the campers will be sent to a new camp. Laszlo then goes over to the Acorn Flats dock and sighs. Then Big Bean comes out and tells Laszlo how to save Camp Kidney. He tells Laszlo that the only way to save his camp is to go into the woods and find the Rock of Hope, where he will find the worldwide Bean Scout Jamboree. Laszlo convinces his friends to join him on the mission to find it, but Edward discourages others from joining. Laszlo, Raj, Clam, and Patsy embark on their adventure. They encounter challenges, but eventually find the Rock of Hope, which just turns out to be a plaque. They attempt to enter the worldwide Bean Scout Jamboree, but are initially denied access by a French snail. However, Clam convinces the snail to let them in by claiming that Patsy is from France, and then they're taken into the Big Bean's palace. In in the end, a vexing plot hole is revealed. The Big Bean is the actual founder of the Bean Scout camp. Now we get to the part where Lumpus's parents caused his behavior to be the way it is, as they show up for the first time in the Lights Out episode. So Lumpus wants to watch a comet named after him that passes Earth once every 50,000 years. But the lights at the Jelly Bean cabin are interfering with his viewing. At first, the Jelly Beans think he wants to blow up the moon. Lumpus later doesn't see the comet until it disappears for another 50,000 years. Okay, now let's go back to the parents. So Lumpus wants to get a bicycle for his fifth birthday, However, his father demands that he deserves to have a comet named after him instead. His dad was Camp Kidney's boss and gave his position to his son, Scoutmaster Lumpus. So, yeah, it's passed down from one generation to another. And like his son, the father is cranky and seems to grow more disdained. Much like Edward's brother could be the reason for the way Scoutmaster Lumpus is. This is likely because his dad mistreated him to leave a line of lazy, abused Scoutmaster Moses for generations. In an attempt to make Scoutmaster happy, after his parents failed to come visit on Parents' Day, the Jellies, with the help of Chip and Skip in trench coats, pretend to be his mom and dad. The next day, Lumpus wakes up and finds a picture of his parents who love him, and that makes him so happy. We also learn something about Slinkman when the Jelly Trio discovers an old time capsule. Slinkman used to be a daredevil named Super Slug. The 10-year-old time capsule was holding some obscure facts, such as the Slinkman having an orange afro before him and Lumpus jumping the dead bean drop and that the two met in Camp Kidney when they were kids, and that Slinkman's cool career was put to an end because of Lumpus's jealousy. When Slinkman was doing a stunt, Lumpus planned for him to get in a deadly accident out of jealousy, and it was then that Slinkman quit being a daredevil. As for Edward's attitude, his four older brothers, Cheesley, Alpine, Fancy Pants, and Philip, visit the camp to watch Edward's performance. They're portrayed as successful and intimidating individuals, placing Edward below them as 
an embarrassment to their family. It is revealed that they were former scouts themselves, and their presence at the camp instills fear in both the campers and Scoutmaster Lumpus. They have a history of bullying and mistreating Edward, which has led to his bitter attitude and desire for dominance over the other campers. However, in O oh Brother Where Art Thou, Edward confronts them and puts an end to their reign of terror, standing up for himself and the other campers. As for Patsy, it turns out that she is depicted as a skilled fighter and unusually strong, possibly due to her military father, Commander Hoo-Ha. Migrating Mulberry Tree is a tree that literally migrates from place to place. Once it arrives at Camp Kidney and Treehugger, both Lumpus and Laszlo are enraptured that they have finally seen it. Although Lumpus wants to chop it down to make a wooden boat, Laszlo, Raj, Clam, and Slinkman trick Lumpus into marrying the tree, and Lumpus falls in love with it. He is extremely sad when the tree migrates to Florida. The tree sends him pictures showing her with two smaller trees that have antlers like Lumpus. Alright, now let's go through some of the best episodes in the show. In Monkey Sea Camping Do, the Jelly Bean Cabin is upset because Leonard Lumpus, later named Algonquin, is sad about his failure to catch the biggest fish. They decide to help Lumpus by stealing his super ship, and when it runs out of fuel and sinks, after some events, Lumpus is eaten by a serpent. But the Jelly Beans comes to the rescue and gets him out of the serpent's mouth along with the fish. In Beans Are From Mars, an ice cream allure takes over the two camps, and while at it, the Squirrel Scouts suspect Laszlo and the Jelly Beans to be aliens from another planet. So they kidnap them for some genuine alien interrogation. The Jelly Beans pretend to be alien invaders, planning to eat brains and, out of spite, the girls sabotage the ice ice cream to glue. The trio eats the ice cream and it turns out that they really are aliens from another planet. In Snake Eyes, the Jelly Beans find a snake and take it to the camp. They then hear noises and upset the snake is responsible for them because they lost it. Patsy offers to help them find the snake and claims that it went on a rampage. The episode ends on a heartfelt note as they find Snakey and Laszlo confronts it. In Parasitic Pal, while swimming in the lake, Laszlo gets a parasite attached to his head. After seeking some help from Nurse Leslie, she assures him that everything is fine. He then bonds with the leech and it drains his blood. But after discovering that the leech is named Lamar and she has babies, he returns her to the water. However, the episodes still end in chaos after Nurse Leslie gets overwhelmed with patients. Scoutmaster Lumpus tries to get closer to Miss Jane Doe, the head of the Squirrel Scouts, at a picnic to which she invites all the scouts. The picnic ends up in a chaotic pinecone sitting competition. Patsy wins and the episode concludes with the drying puddle that somehow leads to a tree falling on Lumpus. In Lumpy Treasure, the Jelly Beans are on the canoe expedition to the Itchy Island after mosquito bites form a treasure map on Raj's butt. The elderly birds Tommy and Timmy plot to influence Raj into doubting his friendship with Laszlo and Clam to get to the treasure first. The two save Raj and his faith in their friendship is restored, but the treasure remains just out of reach. In Dozy Doe, Laszlo wants to help Lumpus with his failed romantic life, so he plans a dance between the Bean Scouts and the Squirrel Scouts, who kidnap Raj and Clam, but finally agree to join the dance after Jane intervenes. Laszlo helps Lumpus get ready for the dance, while Raj and Clam attempt to stall it. The dance starts with an awkward slow dance, but quickly escalates showdown between the Squirrel Scouts and Bean Scouts. Laszlo arrives with a love-struck Lumpus, and Jane reveals that she's been looking for him, causing Lumpus's head to explode. In Float Trippers, Raj loses and misses his retainer, shares memories about it, and gets made fun of. While on a canoe trip, Laszlo tries to cheer him up, but Raj doesn't care. They then approach a waterfall after having an oar fight and fall in it. Raj wants to jump, leaving his friends after seeing his retainer float away, but eventually chooses to stay with his friends. They fall while trying to cross a branch, but are seemingly unharmed. Raj realizes he'll never have a perfect smile, but he will always have great friends. In the wig of why, Miss Mucus loses her wig and dives into the water. Laszlo picks up the wig and gives some predictions that turn out to be true and impresses the Bean Scouts. Lumpus asks Laszlo for help, predicting fame and fortune, but then Laszlo struggles to keep up the facade, so he reveals that the wig is fake and disappoints everyone. Lumpus flees away with the wig because he still believes in it. In Campers All Pull Pants, Edward goes around pulling down everyone's pants and embarrassing them. When it comes to Laszlo's turn, he tries to hide even in Lumpus' office. 
Laszlo decides to settle this by challenging Edward in a pants standoff. The competition ends up in a tie, and the entire camp joins the game. In Hallow Beanies, it's Halloween, and the Jelly Beans stay at Camp Kidney to go trick or treating while the other campers go home. Scoutmaster Lumpus wants a quiet evening, but is surprised when the Jelly Beans come knocking on his door. He pretends they're not real and refuses to give them any candy. The Jelly Beans keep on trick or treating, unknowingly returning to Lumpus's cabin in a circle. Lumpus plans to scare them away, but locks himself out. Meanwhile, the Jelly Beans find a stash of confiscated candies. Lumpus tries to scare them, but gets chased by a bear statue instead. Eventually, Lumpus apologizes and the Jelly Beans power puke, which he mistakes for forgiveness. The episode ends with the Jelly Beans declaring it the best Halloween ever. In Lovesick, during the annual tug of war competition between Camp Kidney and Acorn Flats, Clam gets injured and develops a lovesickness for Gretchen. The camp tries to cure him, but fails. Laszlo calls his grandmother for help and sets off with Raj to find a special pie. Meanwhile, Clam escapes and ends up tying his and Gretchen's neckerchiefs together in a heart-shaped knot. They engage in a one-on-one -on -one tug of war, while Clam's lovesickness spreads to Gretchen. Raj and Laszlo arrive just in time and throw a pie at Gretchen, curing them both. The episode concludes with the revelation that Scoutmaster Lumpus is lovesick for Jane Doe. In Hello Dolly, Edward gets upset when Laszlo takes their loss and capture the flag lightly. He secretly plays with his prized Veronica doll, but Chip and Skip catch him. Edward tosses the doll out the window, and the Jelly Beans find it, mistaking it for an action figure. Edward discovers them playing with it, but hides his true feelings. He faints from the overwhelming stress, and then wakes up to find that his dolly is safe. Laszlo suggests blowing up an effigy instead, and they do. Marshmallows and pickles rain down, and everyone eats them. Edward reluctantly thanks Laszlo, but of course tells him to clean up the mess. In Hot Spring Fever, Clam, Laszlo, and Raj discover a secret hot spring. Raj catches Samson using it and threatens to reveal embarrassing secrets about each other. However, they end up sharing the spring, and after their skin gets wrinkled and they get exposed, the whole camp reveals that they have their skin rashes. Later on, Raj and Samson discover a toy boat in the spring that belongs to Scoutmaster Lumpus. In Seven Deadly Sandwiches, Lumpus and Slinkman visit the Squirrel Scout camp and Lumpus lies to Jane about being the lead role in a play. Laszlo is the director and the rehearsal is chaotic. Lumpus is cast as a rock and gives Jane a gift basket before the show. He also tries to get Jane's attention during the show and Lumpus prevents Jane from eating a poisonous sandwich and is praised for his actions. The play ends up being a success, and Jane invites Lumpus and Slinkman for lattes. In Hard Days Samson, Samson encounters the Squirrel Scouts at Acorn Flats when they snatch the mailbag and discover a magazine featuring a hamster heartthrob. The squirrels mistake Samson for the heartthrob and become infatuated with him. They chase him around camp, causing chaos. Edward enlists the help of the dung beetles to investigate, and they inadvertently reveal Samson's hiding spots. Laszlo tries to resolve the situation while Raj delivers potato salad. The squirrels continue to pursue Samson while Laszlo and Samson hide in Jelly Cabin, but are eventually discovered. The girls feel bad for Samson after the asthma attack, and Raj and Clam trick them by diverting their attention to Edward. The squirrels leave Samson alone, and the group plans to have dinner together. Edward is left to face the consequences of his actions. In Dirt Nappers, Samson, a nerdy and unlucky guinea pig, accidentally vacuums up all the dirt in Camp Kidney with a new vacuum cleaner. However, the absence of dirt causes problems for the Bean Scouts, leading to injuries. Nurse Leslie discovers that Chip and Skip need dirt and flies to remain active. The Bean Scouts try to retrieve their dirt from the Squirrel Scouts, who are using it for a spa. Various attempts fail until Samson insults the Squirrel Scouts, provoking them to throw mud at the Bean Scouts. As a last resort, Samson insults their fashion sense, prompting the Squirrel Scouts to release all the remaining mud. The Bean Scouts restore Camp Kidney with the mud, solving the problem caused by Samson's vacuum mishap. In Space Mates, Nina is initially repulsed when the Universal Board reveals that Chip and Skip are her soulmates. Patsy and Gretchen encourage her to give them a chance, so Nina organizes a date with Chip and Skip, but struggles to tolerate their extreme foolishness. She reaches her breaking point and believes that the universe made a mistake, 
Nina runs away in tears, but Chip and Skip decide to fix the universe for Nina. They construct a rocket using eco-friendly materials and invite Nina to join them on a space adventure. Nina is excited and agrees and boards their makeshift rocket. Unfortunately, the rocket goes out of control and crashes into Acorn Flats. In Tusk Wizard, Raj loses his baby tusk and he believes that he can't see the Tusk Wizard at summer camp. Raj tries various things to make the Tusk Wizard appear, but is disappointed. Laszlo and Clam dress up as the Tusk Wizard to cheer him up, but Raj eventually loses his tusk and realizes he won't see the Tusk Wizard again. So he decides to take another camper's tusks, but Laszlo and Clam prevent him from doing so and confess their actions. Fortunately, in the end, they see the real Tusk Wizard before it's over. In Strange Trout from Outer Space, Samson at Camp Kidney is abducted by aliens who demand cheese. They try to torture him for information, but they fail. Meanwhile, new Canadian fish campers arrive and Samson accuses them of being aliens. No one believes him, so he decides to apologize to the fish, but overhears their plan to steal cheese. He gathers back up to stop them, but fails, and the fish escapes with the cheese. Samson realizes the fish were the aliens and celebrates getting rid of them, but then he discovers that Harold the Walrus is also an alien. Who would have thought? Samson runs away in fear as the aliens reveal they have a backup plan involving acorn flats. In Cheese Orbs, at Camp Kidney, Pat who's allergic to cheese, is excluded from the preparations for the International Cheese Ball. Nina, her inventive friend, creates a cheese-proof suit for her, but of course it malfunctions. After that, Nina encounters aliens who demand cheese and decide to stay with her. Patsy and Gretchen try to get Nina's attention by bringing mythical creatures, but they fail too. As the cheese ball approaches, Gretchen realizes Patsy's cheese allergy could bring Nina back, so they feed Patsy cheese, causing an allergic reaction. Patsy does disguised as an alien, interrupts the event. The real aliens leave disappointed by the lack of cheese, and Patsy's memory is erased by Slinkman. In Hold It, Laszlo, Laszlo wins the lemonade drinking contest against Edward, but struggles to find a bathroom. Eventually, Laszlo uses the bathroom at Camp Kidney despite the out-of-order sign. Edward arrives too late and offers Laszlo a diaper called a Tinkle Tog to cover his embarrassment, but it leads to everyone wearing diapers. Edward's older brothers mock him for losing and wearing a diaper. In Ed's Benedict, the campers tease Edward about his species, calling him a duck or a beaver, and then he finds an egg in his bed and panics. Edward tries to forget about the egg, but Nurse Leslie announces it to everyone. He hides the egg, but eventually decides to take care of it. The eggs in a bird's nest hatch, revealing different species. Edward realizes he won't be a mother, and Dave and Ping Pong confess that they have pranked him. In the end, they all watch films about their species. In Harold and Raj, the Bean Scouts are sharing stories around the campfire. Raj's story impresses everyone, except Harold, who hasn't shared his own yet. Feeling left out, Harold tries to tell a boring story. Later, Harold tries to befriend Raj and imitates his actions and interests, so they spend the day doing things Raj likes. But Raj realizes Harold is just copying him and gets a bit creeped out. Raj ends their friendship, leaving Harold feeling rejected. But he then notices Harold's loneliness and offers to help him discover his true identity. Harold reveals his desire to be a superhero, and they become Captain Banana Pants and Sticky Boy. They attempt a heroic rescue, but of course fail comically. Harold still feels lost until he tells the story of their adventure, impressing everyone at the campfire. In Clown Camp, it's Clown Day at Camp Kidney, but Laszlo is scared of clowns due to a bad experience. Scoutmaster Lumpus decides to make everyday Clown Day and forces campers to be clowns. Lumpus chases Laszlo to Slapstick Mountain, where real clowns live, after he turns him into a clown. The clowns accept Lumpus, but Laszlo feels guilty. Laszlo, Raj, and Clam save Lumpus by tricking the clowns into squeezing into a tiny car. In Edward's sleeping bag, Edward wants to be alone and steals all the Bean Scout sleeping bags to create one giant sleeping bag fort. However, he gets trapped inside and the other scouts mistake it for a monster named Kevin. They all have fun with Kevin until Laszlo realizes it's just Edward and they try to free him. Meanwhile, Slinkman is enjoying a mud bath and returns to find the chaos. He explains that it's just a bunch of sleeping bags 
Bag Zone together, but nobody hears him. Eventually, Laszlo finds Edward and they're finally reunited. In the list, Edward accidentally breaks Laszlo's ankle out of spite, and to make it up to Laszlo, Edward must do all the things Laszlo does for the campers. Edward initially dislikes it, but carries out his tasks. At the end of the day, the campers celebrate Edward's selflessness. However, Laszlo gets jealous and throws a pity party for himself, causing Edward to feel left out, and the two get into self-inflicted competition. In the engagement, Jane Doe gets engaged to Mayor Pothole McPucker, leaving Scoutmaster Lumpus jealous and planning to sabotage Jane Doe and Mayor Pothole McPucker's picnic and movie outing using the trio's help. They also vandalize a statue dedicated to Jane Doe. Jane realizes that Lumpus is behind it all, so she confronts Lumpus and excludes him from her engagement party. He tries to win her back by disguising himself as a woman, but that fails. Eventually, Jane Doe ends up getting engaged to the old turtle. In Clam the Outlaw, Clam gets angry when Lumpus takes the last pancake unrightfully and throws it at him, so he becomes an outlaw and helps the campers with marshmallows and entertainment after Lumpus punishes them. Lumpus tries different schemes to outwit Clam, but he always outfoxes him. Lumpus then decides to become an outlaw as well, but they eventually decide to quit being outlaws. In S is for Crazy, Lumpus and Samson get into mischief after a jellyfish attaches itself to Samson's head. They pull pranks on everyone, including Prickly Pines. Slinkman receives complaints and sends Lumpus to his room. Samson nails Lumpus' bedroom to the ceiling as payback, so he gets scared when he sees Slinkman trans transformed into salt, but restores him. Slinkman urges Lumpus to remove the jellyfish from Samson's head, but Samson's parents arrive. Lumpus disguises Samson's head with a paper bag, but Samson's parents turn out to be jellyfish. The jellyfish, Jimmy, is revealed as Samson's friend, and they all go home. In Wedding Bell Blues, after many failed attempts, Lumpus and Jane plan to get married, but Jane gets stuck inside Raj's trunk. In the end, the two finally marry. Here's how. When Jane Doe is left standing at the altar of her wedding, Scoutmaster Lumpus finally sees his chance and asks Jane Doe to marry him. Jane accepts, but there's just one problem. Raj has accidentally sucked Lumpus's wedding ring up his trunk. Will these complicate matters for the wedding? Well, yeah, because the two get married in the end. All right, now we've got the plot twist that we've all been waiting for with a new character introduced. The real Scoutmaster of Camp Kidney is a one-time character of Camp Laszlo who made his debut in the final episode after the rain washed away the clothes Lumpus made everyone paint on their bodies because he was too lazy to do the laundry. Anyways, it had been revealed that Scoutmaster Lumpus was an imposter all along who locked up the real Scoutmaster in the closet the whole season and stole his job as Scoutmaster. Throughout the entire episode, Lumpus fools everyone in Camp Kidney into thinking that he is the real Scoutmaster of Camp Kidney, but is finally arrested and taken away to a mental asylum under a strap jacket and vows revenge on the steer. Laszlo still thinks it was a great summer. However, it sparks doubt among fans about Lumpus's claims. And that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time with another video.